Welcome back. The case against the man accused of killing three people at a Planned Parenthood clinic last month in Colorado Springs could all hinge on whether he's found to be mentally competent. Robert Deere appeared in court earlier this week. In fact, he interrupted his public defender and told the judge he wants to represent himself. Well, the judge ordered Deere to undergo a mental evaluation. However, in a previous court appearance earlier this month, Deere indicated he would not cooperate with a mental evaluation. Watch. And I'm not going to uh, agree to their mental health evaluations where they want to take me and put me under psychotropic drugs so that I can't talk like the Batman guy. Finish? Okay. Deer faces 179 felony counts, including murder and attempted murder. Let's talk about all of this with criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Nicole uh, DeBoard. Nicole, what happens here if uh, Robert Deer won't go ahead and do this mental evaluation? How does that complicate the next few steps? Well, it just makes it a little more difficult for the court to make the same types of determinations that it's going to make anyway. Uh, they will be able to get his jail records. They will be able to subpoena records from his previous health care providers and probably learn whether or not he's had uh, any other mental health uh, issues or commitments or treatment. And they're going to evaluate him anyway. And they will use what they find with or without his assistance to make the determination about whether he's competent. Now, what do you make of the fact that he wants to represent himself here? He's been interrupting his uh, public defender, almost making the situation more difficult for him in addition to the things he's said. I mean, do you think he's increasing his chances of, of what? I mean, what is he doing here? There is a saying amongst lawyers that even a lawyer who represents himself has a fool for a client. Mm -hmm. And that is even more true for somebody who has no legal training whatsoever. Uh, it is a disaster for someone to try to represent themselves in court, even if they've got legal training. This individual has none. Uh, and it's, it's absolutely not going to be a positive thing for his case. He will increase the likelihood that the damage to him will be great. Now, this uh, question on if he's mentally competent, what, what happens if he, he takes that test and he, he is found to be mentally competent? And, and how does that factor into the possibility of the death penalty here? I mean, people died in this shooting. Absolutely. It's a, it's a tragic case. And the reality is, is that if he is found competent, the district attorney's office can proceed just as they would in any other case. And if the DA decides that they want to seek the death penalty, they will be able to do that. And he will be tried uh, and at risk for death if he's ultimately found guilty if they choose to proceed in that way. Have you ever seen a case like this? I mean, where there's been such a horrific crime and the defendant wants to represent himself, the fear is that there may be some grandstanding as he makes more political statements. Sure. Unfortunately, a lot of folks that end up in the criminal justice system are there because of some sort of mental health problem. Whether or not the mental health problem makes them incompetent is a completely different question. But people in that circumstance make some incredibly poor decisions even once they're in court. So it's not as uncommon as you might think. All right. Uh, for a criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor, Nicole DeBoard, thanks for your insight and for joining us this weekend on CNN. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.